Hi, I'm Rebecca Gallardo, and I'm the host of Alone in a Room with Invisible People. I'm here with author and teacher Holly Lyle, and today's topic is Alone in a Room with Invisible People. <laughs> um, we're going to talk a little bit about who we are and why the podcast is named Alone in a Room with Invisible People. <laughs> okay. So, Holly, yeah, go ahead. Take it away. Let me know who you are. Yes. Well, okay. First off, I I'm Becca's mother. Yes. <laughs> I'm also um, uh, a longtime novelist. Uh, I've been a pro since 1991. Uh, I've got more than 30 novels in print, uh, most of them commercially published. I've gone indie in the last mm, several years, and um, I, I love this job. Uh, this is this is the job that uh, I wanted from the time I was 24 years old. It took me a while to get here, but I got here. And then let's go back to Becca. <laughs> well, you also you also teach courses and everything, too. Oh, yes, yes, I do. Okay. Um, uh, along with writing fiction, I also write nonfiction classes specifically step-by-steps on how I do what I do. And uh, my classes have gotten a lot of people published in their various genres. Yeah, and they're huge classes, ginormous. Some yeah. of them, yeah. I mean, some, some of them, them are yeah. very, very large. <laughs> and how long, when was your first... Um, uh, I guess book or course or when when was the first one that came out? Oh God, um, nineteen no two thousand two thousand six. Uh, that was the Create a Character Clinic, and uh, that I did on spec uh, with some folks on my blog. They asked me a bunch of questions, and I said, "Well, hey, uh, I could do a class. Do you want me to show you how I do this?" And there was a massive a res <laughs> yes. yeah, resounding yes please <laughs> yes and um uh create a character clinic is still you know selling and still out there and uh you know people are still using that to get started so but there are a lot of other things now too yeah yeah there's a bunch of stuff in there other clinics other courses uh, yeah that's a lot so um i am you know as you've already explained i'm your daughter <laughs> so <laughs> Um, I have grown up uh, pretty much around that that creative mindset and there was you know the biggest thing I think I ever learned was that um, there was nothing that I couldn't do as long as your, your thing was you can do anything you just have to put the work in and that was something that um, y y it takes a little while to really learn especially when you're a kid because you don't want to work but the more you you know start to apply yourself in different areas the more you start to see the return. So I think I wrote my first or tried to write something the first time I was 11 years old. And then I still remember the first time I ever tried to write a um, romance thing because that was my big thing. I was 12 or 13. So I have been trying since I was about 13 or 14 to actually write something legitimately, you know, sellable and all that stuff. And I, I've definitely been lucky because I've, I've always had your help <laughs> so you know that makes a big difference um it didn't matter if it was a screenplay a story or a book you know you me and my brother we would all sit around on a couch and and we had writers meetings and everything so I, I really really benefited from this huge um you know lifestyle of of creativity <laughs> so <laughs> and 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 watching how how amazingly well it pays too clearly oh god <laughs> yeah that's the other thing that i benefited from benefited from was seeing how much of a struggle you had to go through with all of these different publishing companies with all of these different problems if there was something that happened with a publishing company you dealt with it if there was something negative that went on it you dealt with it so everything it was definitely murphy's law has has definitely had an effect in your life <laughs> yeah well yeah and and i can say this about that all of the crap that rains down on your head does make very nice fiction yes yeah and i've <laughs> i've i've noticed that i've taken a lot of uh the crap that i've had to go through and put it in into my own work and and you're right it does it makes for something that's more compelling um, so yeah anyway i i am a writer and an artist i have sold um a bunch of stuff in uh, indie i have uh two pen names that i work under and one of them is is still paying you know a little little bit here and there um but i wanted to i made a promise to my husband to try to get something traditionally published and it didn't matter to him that this pub that this promise was uh when we first met basically <laughs> and the the indie field was was significantly different 
back in 2006, I guess. And, and that was that was the first time that you ever published anything indie. Yeah. Was was that? So, um, well, except for Mugging the Muse, but that was that that came later. But that was basically just a compilation of the best hits off of my website. Oh, I thought. I thought Mugging the Muse was earlier, because didn't you have me, you wanted me to draw a little cartoon for it. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, but I don't, uh, I think that one was, was free or was very inexpensive. That was, that was on booklocker.com, and it was selling for $10 a p- oh, per. Oh, okay. Awesome. Um, but then they required that they, they changed their terms so that you also had to publish print, and I couldn't afford to publish print, <laughs> so I pulled it down and made it free. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, they're lost. But, um... But yeah, so I got to the point where I finally this year just sat down, wrote a book. Um, the book writing was actually incredibly quick. It took me about 19 days, including plotting, um, to write. At the time, it was about 50,000 words. And then through the revision process using how to, write, how to revise your novel, I ended up adding a whole bunch more words. So it's about 70,000 at this point. Um, I sent it to you and Matt at, from mattscontentedits.com. Is that the right website? Uh, yeah. I didn't mean to plug him, but that's, you know, <laughs> he, we, <laughs> I definitely used his services as well. And um, got it back. And now I am just waiting on a beta reader before I sent it to my bug hunter. So that is who I am. Um, I have never been traditionally published, unlike my mother. I've only been indie published, and I think my entire career I've made about four thousand dollars writing fiction, which is not a bad number. <laughs> no, that's not a bad number. That's you know a, a lot of folks who are doing this aren't making anything yet. Yeah. So yeah. our our objective with this is to work with both commercial and indie uh, oriented writers, and help you find a way to get where you want to go with your career. No matter we we both have indie published. Um, I have commercially published heavily. I have some horror stories to tell. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm shooting for a traditional publication in a uh, ever-changing market, a market that is very different than the one that you published in. So we will have different different points of views on this. Yeah, let's get to why the podcast is named Alone in a Room with Invisible People. Yes, because this actually has meaning. <laughs> It is, believe it or not, the job description. <laughs> it is what you are doing is you are sitting on your butt in a room alone. And you don't have anything going on. You don't have television or video games or music or it's just you and your words and the voices of people who don't exist. And your job is to make those people feel real to yourself. If you can make them feel real to yourself, you can make them feel real to anybody. But doing that is a trick. So we're going to show you over however many episodes we can hold together for this, <laughs> how to make your invisible people come to life. And some sometimes the episodes might be something small too. It might just be just a, a small part of um making this easier because it's it's the podcast is also just me and my mom doing the same thing we do every Sunday anyway um <laughs> which is just sit around chatting about you know writing of course we'll we won't be talking so much about our our lives and our cats like we normally do <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah so this is something that we do all the time anyway we talk about writing we're obsessed with you know the job so it's it's something that we realize that other people might actually find interesting, might benefit from, um, will benefit from. We especially with Holly's, you know, many many years on the subject and her um, incredible brain in the way that that she can. Um, yeah, now she's blushing and stuff, but whatever. <laughs> to to me, it's yeah, it's, well, it's an incredible <laughs> ability to take things apart. Um, <laughs> like when she, when she was younger, she wanted to learn how to knit a sweater, so she took apart the sweater and watched it backwards and learned how to knit. That is the kind of brain that is able to take apart how she does stuff and then put it on paper and teach people. So it it's just I don't see how anybody could not benefit from this. This is this is just such a a fun great idea and 
she came up with the title alone in a room with invisible people and i was like immediately that's it i did we we still went through the other titles that we thought about for the podcast but i was like no, that's 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 got to be the one it's just it's it's so true you know <laughs> I do. <laughs> so what we're going to do is um, we just wanted to let you guys know who we are, you know, a little bit about the podcast, what we're going through. We should we should also let them know about the blog. Oh, yeah. Which you can you can get there three different ways. <laughs> you you can get there at alone in a room with invisible people dot com if you want to type it all out or alone with invisible people if you're not into the really long domain name typing <laughs> or it's a it, it's i've been playing with the pronouncement i think it's air whip <laughs> it's like air whip <laughs> it's a i a r w i p dot com again that's a i a r w i p dot com i see that one taking people to a lot of places yes. they might not want to go <laughs> Just make so sure be you, very very yeah. careful how you spell that folks <laughs> so yeah so that's that's we've also got all the social medias if you were interested we have a facebook page we um that would be alone in a room with invisible people uh it is also at air whip <laughs> so you can you can look that up it, again it's a i a r W I P, and if you want to find us on Instagram, it's the same thing at Airwhip, and uh, you can also type "alone in a room with invisible people." We are also on the Twitter, so <laughs> you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. In um, you can also email us at Rebecca at alone with invisible people. So if you have any questions and or anything, mm -hmm. if they have questions they can post them on our blog yes yes you can post them on our blog. you can also find us on podbean so um believe that that is what a, um alone in a room or is that alone it's with it's um holly lyle dot podbean dot com so that one's a little tougher well, that's not so bad and holly lyle is h-o-l-l-y-l-i-s-l-e dot com or dot podbean dot com so dot, yeah dot podbean dot we'll dot. have all this stuff you know cleaned up later but <laughs> we'll, we'll get <laughs> yeah. in a rhythm with this but um thank you very much for listening and we hope to see you on the next episode and if you have any questions or just want to give us a shout out find us at any of those social medias or email us and you guys you any last words holly nah seriously um questions if you if you have them uh we will take them on and give you both of our perspectives her as going at it and me as having been there and done that. Thank you very much for listening and we'll see you on the next episode.